Catherine from Double Kini here. Welcome to our journey together to a better Kini house. Today's video comes with a very important message. If you have Kini disease, don't be afraid, don't be scared, and most important, never give up. I've been working with people with kidney problems for eight years and I've met patients who were almost giving up. But some of them found ways to stop the progression of kidney disease and some to reverse it. Okay guys, one of the best things for me of having this channel, Double O Kini, is receiving messages and comments from you guys telling me about your success stories with CKD. And today's video is all about one of them. His name is Joseph. Hi Joseph, thank you for letting me share your story. Joseph is using the power of good habits coupled with some powerful home remedies to reverse kidney disease. Yes, the seven good habits of today's video are exactly what Joseph is doing. Let's start immediately. Number seven, keep your mind healthy. Keeping your kidneys free from toxins, chemicals, and harmful substances is key if you are serious about repairing your kidneys. What many people don't know is that keeping your mind free from toxic thoughts is just as important. I want to explain this in the words of one of you guys. I received this comment a couple of weeks ago and I couldn't wait to read it here. Hi Catherine, since we are talking success stories, I want to share mine. My name is Joseph and I've been diagnosed with CKD four years ago at the time, my GFR was around 27, unbeknownst to me. My labs were a mess and I had no idea anything was wrong. Doctor told me to take medications and things were stable. My function was getting worse over time despite all the pills I was taking. I was hovering around 17 or so. My body was tired while my mind was checked out completely. This lasted for three years until I started following your channel. I cannot express in words how much hope you gave me. I never knew there are things you can do to slow down kidney disease and that the diet is so important. You can improve your numbers through diet and lifestyle changes. The healthier you eat, the less waste in your blood, thus less filtering to be done. Also, I let my nephrologist know that I really wanted to get to the bottom of what is causing my kidney problem. I've turned my life round. I started walking to my workplace every day. I stopped eating protein. I stopped eating heat and salt. Your video convinced me about that. I've also started to use baking soda and Okay guys, more about this part later on in today's video. In just 8 months, I was feeling better than I ever did in the last 4 years. Then I went for a blood test 2 months ago. My doctor was very glad to let me know that my GFR was back at 41. Wow, this is amazing! Thank you very much for sharing your story with us. And guys, reading his message, I felt that his story was amazing and I definitely wanted to know more. And as I usually do when one of you guys tell me about a success story like this, I did a full interview with him. I've exchanged several emails with Joseph in the last weeks and he told me everything about what really made a difference for him in the treatment of CKD. Not surprisingly, many of the good habits he developed in the last year are supported by science. Today, we are going to see what worked for him and how much you can use it for yourself. Yes, there is a lot I want to show you today, but don't forget to share this message of hope. Share this video with anyone you know who might benefit from knowing that it is actually possible to improve your kidney health. But let's move on now. Our good habit number six is one of the most powerful ways to help your kidneys get better. Good habit number six, eat some berries. I've made countless videos about the healthiest foods for your kidneys. If you have been watching me regularly, you may know that I firmly believe that knowing what to eat instead of what to avoid is the best way to eat healthy. And I don't remember a single video in which I haven't included berries. 
the reason? Well, a healthy renal diet is the best way to lower your creatinine levels and no doubt about it. And it's a fact that one of the most significant aspects of every single healthy diet is the antioxidant content. Having enough antioxidants in the diet can help lower cholesterol, can help fight off colds and infections and promote cardiovascular health. Actually, it's not excessive to say that your life depends on the adequate intake of certain essential antioxidants. What many people don't know is how hard it is to get enough antioxidants in a kidney diet without overloading on potassium. And when it comes to antioxidants to potassium ratio, berries are amongst the best. So eat strawberries to help with blood pressure and to fight bad cholesterol. Eat blueberries because they're the highest in antioxidants amongst all berries. Eat raspberries to help with diabetes and heart health. Eat goji berries to support kidney function and eat cranberries because they can protect your urinary tract and kidneys from infections. Don't worry about potassium because all berries are exceptionally low in this dangerous mineral. Plus, you need to eat a small quantity daily to get the health benefits. Now, the other good thing about berries is that no one can ruin them with heat and salt and sugar, unlike many other foods. Good habit number five, avoid heat and salt and sugar. Almost every single kidney patient is advised to avoid added salt and this is correct. Excessive salt intake can cause high blood pressure, heart disease can also cause calcium losses and according to recent studies it can directly damage the kidneys. And I bet that all of you guys following me right now are very careful with the salt shaker. What Joseph told me in his emails is that he was shocked when he found out that 80% of the salt we ingest every day comes from processed foods and not from the salt shaker. For example, cured meats and cold cuts are often loaded with salt. Some brands of sliced deli turkey, for example, have over 1000 milligrams of sodium in just a four ounce serving. And consider that you are only supposed to get 1500 milligrams of sodium per day. Fast foods, bacon and processed meats, shortenings but also salad dressings and snacks and so on. Some of these foods contain more than 1500 milligrams of sodium per portion. This is why for most people excess salt is usually not coming from the salt shaker but from the foods you see in this slide. Now guys, there is only one thing worse than hidden salt, hidden sugar. Sugar is even worse than salt when it comes to blood pressure and most important, it is an addictive substance. The more you eat, the more you crave it. This is why food producers hide it in everything they can. Fruit juice is an example. There is way more sugar in a glass of fruit juice than any healthy nutrients. Sport drinks are even worse. They're also full of potassium, granola. Granola is often marketed as a low-fat health food, despite being high in both calories and sugar. Same for breakfast cereals. Flavored coffees and creamers are also to be avoided. Vitamin water. Vitamin water is marketed as a healthy drink that contains added vitamins and minerals. However, like many other healthy drinks, vitamin water comes with a large amount of added sugar. So, don't get fooled by advertising and put your health first. Now, Joseph also told me about a couple of home remedies that really help. Use baking soda. Baking soda is the true miracle remedy for people with kidney problems. All the good habits we have seen today have one aim. To help the kidneys keep the acid alkaline balance in the body. The more acidic foods we ingest, the more burden on the kidneys. On the other hand, baking soda is a base extremely alkaline. It directly removes burden from the kidneys. And there are studies confirming that administering baking soda can effectively slow down the progression of kidney disease. Now, there's just one problem with baking soda. 
you need to be tested both for sodium bicarbonate levels and for serum potassium to know if you can benefit from it and in what dosages. The sodium bicarbonate test is especially important because it will let your doctor know how much baking soda you need exactly. Some people just take it and hope for the best. One gram three times per day with water is a common dosage, but it's always better to have a doctor that can get the dosage right. So if you are suffering from kidney disease stage four or five and you're not taking baking soda, talk to your doctor and see if you need it. You probably do. Okay, our number three is a home remedy that can really make a difference and not just for our friend Joseph. In a breakthrough study conducted on 35 stage 4 and 5 chronic kidney disease patients, this natural remedy did what many considered to be a miracle. Number 3. Astragalus This adaptogen was proven to be incredibly effective against the progression of kidney disease. In a study published on a prestigious paper, astragalus extract was able to lower creatinine levels of stage 4 and 5 kidney disease patients. Test subjects were being treated for CKD-related complications such as hypertension, renal anemia, metabolic acidosis, and mineral bone disease with antihypertensive drugs, erythropoietin, baking soda, vitamin D, and more. So basically, some of them were even receiving better care than most patients actually. Now, despite these treatments, none of them were getting any better. All the patients had a decline in kidney function in the months before starting the therapy with astragalus. Then, they were administered 2.5 grams of astragalus twice a day, together with conventional therapy. In just 3 months of therapy with astragalus, their GFR started to go up instead of down. Guys, if you want to know more about astragalus, I made a full video about it. It's up here. Number 2. Find out what's causing your kidney problems. I know that many of you guys already know very well what's the root of the problem, but if you have any doubts or if your doctor wasn't completely clear on why you have kidney disease, get to the bottom of it. This is absolutely necessary. I know that spending more time in hospitals and with doctors is not pleasant and for some may be a problem, but trust me when I say that, it is well worth knowing. So find a nephrologist if you don't have one already. They are the basics of best practice for CKD patients right now and do all the tests you need. There are two very common causes of chronic kidney disease diabetes and high blood pressure. They account for more than 3 out of 4 cases of kidney disease, but there are many other causes including tumors, nephritis, hereditary causes such as polycystic kidney disease, glomerular diseases such as IgA nephropathy. Also, we can see that miscellaneous here accounts for 6% of cases. This includes interstitial nephritis and inflammation of the kidneys, tubules, and surrounding structures, prolonged obstruction of the urinary tract from conditions such as enlarged prostate, kidney stones, and some cancers, recurrent kidney infection, also called pyelonephritis, and more. And then there are even cases of kidney disease with unknown causes. Now, as I always say, the primary goal of any treatment is to stop the cause of the damage. If you have diabetes, you should keep your blood sugar under control, for example. There are no way to get better without doing that. But if you are suffering from kidney disease due to one of these many causes, you have to find out which one clearly and treat accordingly. Unfortunately, some patients get accounted in the high blood pressure group while the cause is another. This is because kidney disease causes high blood pressure by itself. So do all you can to be 100% sure about what's causing your problem. If you are going to a nephrologist, they will probably do all of those things as a matter of course. But if you are dealing with a general practitioner, internist, etc., 
you may have to push and push hard for all of these points. This has been a fast moving field over the past few decades and unless your doctor is closely following all of the research and recommendations, they simply don't know about them. As recently as the 1960s and 70s doctors thought that high blood pressure was good for people particularly as they got older. Starting in about the 1970s, some big research studies changed the viewpoint about blood pressure in general and it has really only been in the past 20 years or so that research has clearly shown how damaging even moderately high blood pressure is to the kidneys. The recommendation to keep the upper number below 120 is quite new but now also quite strongly supported by research. This brings us to our number one. Keep being informed. We can tell from what happened to our friend Joseph, knowledge is power. And he admitted he would have never been able to reverse kidney disease without getting informed in depth about his condition. And we should also consider that the world of kidney disease has become a very fast moving field. Chronic kidney disease is the most under-recognized public health crisis in the world, but things are going to change. Breakthrough innovations and medications are being researched every day. My last video about Parksiga is a clear example. We are talking about the new prescription that's proven to slow down kidney disease progression. You should watch that one if you have missed it, by the way. And important steps forward are being made even on the transplant front. It's just a matter of years before we see the first human being transplanted an artificial kidney. So guys, remember to subscribe and set the notification bell to all if you want me to keep you informed. Okay guys, this is all for today. Thank you for watching.